What's up guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Tetrobot and Co. Now this is a pretty cool puzzle game made by Swing Swing Submarine, and this is of course going to be a quick look at the game, but if you want my full thoughts, a full review on the game, make sure you check out the link in the description. I wrote a full review of the game with my score and everything on BrokenCartridge.net. It's a pretty cool review and I'm very happy that I had the time to make it, so please check it out if you have the time. Now, Tetrabot and Co. is made by Swing Swing Submarine, who also made Blocks That Matter. And the both games have their own ties, but I really feel like this upstages Blocks That Matter in several ways. It's overall more fun, and by um, mechanics and all, it's just overall more pleasant puzzle game. With that being said, why don't we try it out a bit? I'm going to throw out some story to you guys, show you the very, very quick opening cutscene that the game has. Now this cutscene shows that we have um, this girl we play as named Maya, and really she fixes the Tetrobots from Blocks That Matter. How does she do that? Well, she inserts a Psychobot in them. A Psychobot is a microscopic organism, or machine of some type, that goes in there and fixes whatever problems we might find in the Tetrobots. Now it seems like each section has a different thing wrong with the Tetrobots. This one's filled with water, this one's filled with sticky goop, I know there's one that's like frozen or cut in half, and they all affect gameplay in their own different ways. Why don't we just do a normal level? Just to show you guys what's going on here. Let's do free floating. You know, these earlier ones aren't too hard. So, we can move around anywhere on the map. We have a bit of a grid system here, and Blocks That Matter was a puzzle platformer. You know, we were restricted to the, gr to the ground and jumping. But we do have the return of materialistic blocks that have certain abilities. So if I take this block right here, you know, those two attached, when they're detached, gravity will work on them. But if they're attached, it, you know, and there's a gravity for this one, running on here, this one will not fall. And it's like, oh, is that confusing? Well, then I can press the pause menu and go over here to face blocks. And now there's an explanation for every type of block. So, you know, instead of having a specific thing saying, hey, idiot, do this, they have this nice little, like, status update, and it'll sort of tell you what it is about and what it does. So you shut out pass, one-way ticket, you see right through me. It tells you exactly what it does in a very clever way, and I thought it was really nice. It really shows that you don't need in-game text prompts to blatantly tell somebody what to do in a video game. But there we go, we have these landed in these blocks, and that activates this from not being blocked off. And that's the main idea, is usually you have something like this blocking your path, and you have to find a way to get through it. So now that we know we can actually see through these, we can suck up, suck up blocks through them as well. And we just want to throw them over here. Why not? And that'll change the path. It's really fun, and you get really into it. It's a very chill game, too. You can hear the music, you can see the visuals. They're all very charming and stuff. Okay, so what do we got going on over here? It looks like I need a wooden block here, but I do not have one available to me. If I stand right here, that'll get rid of that, which is nice. But let me try to go in here. And here's the wooden block. Okay, so the problem is, is if I, if I just throw it over here... It'll land over there, and then I can't have it land over there. So what I want to do is go up here, throw it over here, and there you go, it'll land like that. Now I can drop this and I'll go where it's supposed to. And that's really the goal of it, you know, is to do things like that. Now you might be able to see here, I have a very hollowed out golden block. Now usually this would be full, but I already collected it. There's three of those per game, and they're pieces of memory. The more you restore those, the more you can unlock throughout the game. Now this, I don't think I'm allowed to pass here with any blocks in my inventory. They'll be taken away from me. Okay, so now I can go up or down, and I need to put four sandboxes in there to continue on there. Okay. So I can sit here, and this will use that sandblock. Okay. So I can take this, throw it over here, and then I'll drop that. So it's just knowing your surroundings and being able to work with things knowing the mechanics of the game. Now I can take this back. Alright, so... I still need four sandblocks, so... Here is one. And here is the other. Now if I really want to go and get that metal block, or the goal, or the memory piece, excuse me, um, what I want to do is I just want to drop it down there, I can fly down, 
Easy peasy. I'll show you guys how to get these ones just because. I'm actually gonna sort of mess it up, but it's okay. I can just fly around and suck them back up. And it really entices that you really think about what you're doing later in the game, and it's really nice. It's just like, it's not crazy difficult until later. It does get pretty difficult and thought-inducing, but it's always fun. And it looks like we're missing a gold piece. We could look around for that if we wanted to. I do believe I messed it up, though. I can't completely remember. I don't know, let's just give it a quick look around and see if we can't find anything. Eh, it doesn't look like I'm finding it. I'm gonna keep it short, because I don't want to spend 20 minutes on an early level. We're gonna show, you know, different levels off. Or at least, at least one more I'd like to show off. There we go, we'll have this, you know, closing scene. We'll get a roundup, and it'll tell us all the blocks we got. And we get approved, we'd get a perfect if we had all three. You know, I could play it again or I could exit. And I will exit. So there's about, I believe there are eight different sections in total, including B, Big Mama, there's like little side ones as well. But there are eight sections in total and we can unlock different things. We got Big Mama Arena with certain keys. Now keys you unlock at the end of each if if you get, I think if you get through all these, you'll unlock the eight, the sixth one, and that'll be, um, your key. And then I can, like, you know, go through and unlock more and more. So, in total, there's, like, 11 different sets of levels. Are they all extensive to six? No, but there's still eight different sets. And, of course, there's a bit of a storyline, and we unlock that more as we go. Why don't we go into 2-2, two, two, Feed the Beast. Now this one, the Tetrabot was broken in water, and you can see that affects the level. Now, um, basically what we're trying to do is get past this, it sort of more, acts more like Jello. We cannot get inside it, but if I go in one of these cannons and it shoots me through, it can. So now we can go in this cannon, press the big button, and it'll shoot us through. Alright, let's go in here. And it looks like a piece of the pipe is missing, so we can't go through there. Why don't we check out what's in here? Um, it looks like a bit. Can I? Yeah, okay. So now, I can actually turn this one around, and I want to shoot it over here. That would be nice. And I can suck this up. And this is really nice. I don't know, I have this really relaxed feeling when I play through this game. The only time I ever get frustrated is when I'm mad at myself because I can't figure something out. Because I do really get tricky after a bit. And it looks like there's something in this one. Where is that? That's going to be a gold block. So why don't we go back over there and get that. And the music's really nice too. The game just has so much charm and I really like how they have this nice storyline that correlates with blocks that matter. Okay, so now I have this block, which is supposed to go over here. Then I'm gonna take it, and then throw it over here. Now I'll get out of its way, and now it should be good. Should be able to traverse through the pipe. And there's another golden block. What else do we got, though? I can take this. And then maybe throw it over here? Yeah, there you go. That'll at least help me get through, and then I can take it again. And you just, you, under, you start understanding what each block does, and how you can use it to your advantage, and the many different situations they give you. You know, with each new mechanic added to each section, it gets slowly and slowly more additive and complicated. Okay, so I can move this like this and throw it over here. And throw this over here. No. Oh, there's something in this one. Okay, so now I can throw this over here, down there. Suck that up, and now I can actually go and switch this again. Switch it again. There you go, you gotta be quick with that one. There you go, now I have another gold block. Or, uh, they're not gold blocks, they're pieces of memory. Hard to remember that for whatever reason. And, um, what I believe I have to do here... Uh, this one's a little tricky, isn't it? Hmm. Because I don't want to throw it over there, because that's not going to help me at all. Maybe I could go back in here and see if I can't grab that wood block. That would be nice to have. Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so I can throw this over here. Fly up. Get the wood block. Alright, let's see what I can do now. So I want to throw this... Oh, no. Let me take that back. 
So I really don't know how the Xbox controls work just because I like the mouse keyboard or the mouse control so easy. It's it's like, I don't know, I really enjoy it because of how just simple it is. It's like, it's one-handed gameplay, I could be doing something else with my, I can check my phone, I could just relax. It's, it's, it's nearly a casual game, but I mean, it really does induce thoughts, which is a little more complicated than that. Now, if I really want to get complicated here, what I can do, shoot it over here. I can... Oh, wait. No, I think I did that wrong. And eh, whatever. What's this end the level? I know some extended things to go and get, uh... I guess I can show off this. It's like, oh, no, I don't want to go in there. I can actually press the reverse button and go back. And I can, like, hit myself against the wall. All that. But, um... Yeah, I'm gonna just keep the level off with that. So in neither of them, I got the all three pieces of the memory block, but I wasn't exactly looking for them very hard. If you really are thorough with the levels, figure out the mechanics, and, you know, just really do your best, I'm sure you can find three memory blocks pretty easily in the first sets of levels. Oop, I continued on to the next one. I didn't want to do that. Let me get out of here. So what do the memory pieces do, you might ask? Well, some of these don't even unlock without a certain amount of memory pieces. And of course, that means you can't progress with the game. Also, playing through the game will get you different things like these pictures. And these pictures will also describe pieces of the story, what is going on. It's all really cool, and the artwork is bedazzling. Then in here, we have a little bit of information with each Tetrabot. This is the Wada Boy, the thing we were just at, the Wada Bot, excuse me. I was deep sea diving with my robot when he started blowing little bubbles. Do you think you can repair him in less than 80 days? Hopefully. Then we actually have different sound songs. I like this one. You know, just more ones we can unlock as we get farther in the game, play more levels. And right here we actually have the credits of the songs. One thing I really liked is actually if you go in here, we could probably see, like the game hidden in plain sight. And then it's all, movies gone with the wind. It actually references real life movies and games and music. I thought it was just a really nice touch. We also have achievements. But besides that, I think that's about it. You know, a, a settings thing. But this doesn't go too much into detail. And a little tutorial if we need it. One of the glorious things is that this game doesn't really give you too much in-game dialogue at all. Which explains the face box thing. But that's about it. Over here we have a work in project progress community page. And what I believe they're adding here is they're going to add workshop. They're going to add workshop levels if you want to. I think. I haven't been told too much on this. And you know, it's not available to me. So I can't really review that part. But that's been your quick look at Churchabot and Co. If you want a more detailed walk, not a walkthrough, excuse me, a more detailed review, make sure you look at the link in the description where I've written a full review of the game on BrokenCartridge.net. Thank you guys ever so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys later.